Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Thank him for the breath that the Lord has given unto us. Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for keeping us. He is the king of kings. Let us be glad and rejoice in him. That he is our God. He is our king. He is our father. He is our friend. He is our all in all. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Let his name and his name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted. Exalt him and let his glory come down. Exalt him, exalt him. Let his glory fill our lives. Exalt him, exalt him. Let him alone be exalted. Let him alone be exalted. Exalt him, exalt him that he will take over. Exalt him that his glory will fill our lives, fill the earth, fill the families. Exalt him. Just exalt him, exalt him, magnify him. Exalt him. In your heart, magnify him. In your life, magnify him. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of ages. There I am, there I am. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Daddy, we give you glory and honor. Here we are, O Lord, we surrender in your hand. Be the exalted over our lives this morning. Be the exalted that you have your way. In this congregation, in this gathering, and all over the province, have your way. Minister unto us. As you have never done before, reach out unto us. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let somebody shout hallelujah. You are welcome in the presence of our Father. Please greet one another once again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Just one announcement before we go ahead. Um, the children, teachers, they are requesting parents to please give them advance notice, advance information before you bring the birthday cakes, the birthday biscuits or sweets to the children. They want to receive it. They want to get your information two weeks before. They wouldn't want just for parents to just come early in the morning. They have their programs, and then you bring the birthday celebration gifts. Praise the Lord. They just want to be organized, and that is why they are requesting that. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Amen. So we welcome everyone to today's service. As has been announced, the Lord has put it in our heart that it's going to be a thanksgiving and an anointing service. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us to move fast so that our time is already fast spent. The title is The Glory of His pre uh, Presence. And that is what the Lord gave us, the team the Lord gave us for the month of April. And it is our prayer that the glory of God will be revealed in our lives before the end of this month and subsequently for the rest of the year in Jesus' name. I want you to turn to somebody and say, the glory of his presence is not a, a common spiritual commodity. It's not a common spiritual commodity. Praise the Lord. It is an item that we have to search for, that we have to seek for. Hello? Say it to one another, it is an item that we must desire and seek for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we go to 2 Corinthians 3? 2 Corinthians 3, we read from verses 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 to 18. If you dare, I read. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So the Bible tells us that we are being changed from glory to glory. There is that glory that manifests in the Lord. And the Bible says we are beholding that glory through a glass. Praise the Lord. But while we behold it and walk with the Lord, we are being changed into the same image that is in our Lord Jesus Christ from glory to glory. So there are realms of glory. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will help us to get there in Jesus' name. So what is glory? I said, God is the glory. God is the glory from what we have read. And the glory is God. Both of them are inseparable. We can't separate two of them. The glory is God, and God is the glory. Praise the Lord. So when we look at glory and we come to think about the fact that God is eternal and God is glory and glory is God, it tells us one thing, that the glory of God is eternal. And because the glory of God is eternal, there is no limitation concerning the glory of God. The glory manifestation, therefore, showcases the spiritual reality that is in Christ Jesus. The spiritual reality that is in God. Because the glory is eternal. The glory is God and God is the glory. Whatever that is in glory is the essence of God. Praise the Lord. If we go for that, therefore, we can say that the glory of God is the fullness of God. The glory of God is the manifestation of his presence. The glory of God is the manifestation of the character of God, his nature and his abilities. And we went further, we said that the glory of God showcases the weight and the splendor of his majesty. It tells us about how big and how great the splendor of his majesty is the essence of his beauty. The glory of God is God himself. It is God and all that God has. Praise the Lord. That is the glory of God. Now, if we summarize all that we have talked about concerning the glory of God, we can say that the glory of God, therefore, who refer to the essence of his law, his power, and his sovereignty. The essence of his law, his power, and his sovereignty. Praise the Lord. 
And it is not surprising that this glory can be found in the presence of God. This glory is associated with his presence. And the presence of God reveals his awesome personality. When, when, the, when the Bible talks about the presence of God, and the, and the Bible tells us it, it comes down on top of the mountain like a thunder with fire, with sounds rumbling. It comes, tells us one thing, but it tells us the personality, the power, the awesomeness that he, he goes around with. That is what it tells us. Praise the Lord. So his presence reveals his awesome personality, his power, and his nature. And that is beyond human comprehension. We cannot understand why. When God shows forth with his presence, it comes with fire. When he, comes, he shows forth his presence, it comes with cloud. It comes with thunder. It comes with sounds, rumbling sounds. Nobody can understand why. We can't comprehend it. It's beyond our understanding. Yet, that is the presence of God. And in that presence, he reveals his glory. Praise the Lord. So why can't we understand it? One thing with the presence of God is that when he manifests his glory, his glory is beyond understanding. But the Bible tells us that in the same manifestation of his presence and glory, God also comes as a consuming fire. He comes as a blessed God that is ready to bless his own people. He comes as a merciful God, yet he's a consuming fire. That makes it impossible for us to understand him. Praise the Lord. You know, in Leviticus, so before we go to Leviticus, no, so there are these two aspects of the manifestation of his presence and his glory. One is that he is a God that cannot take skin, is sin. He can't understand. He cannot stand skin, uh, uh, sin at all. And so when you go before him as he manifests, as a sinful individual, he consumes the person. He tells the children of Israel. He tells Moses, no, none of them should. I'm going to meet with my people. I'm going to appear on the top of the mountain. But none of them should touch the mountain. They can come around the mountain, but none, because anyone that touches the mountain will be consumed. Praise the Lord. That is the awesome power, and that is the manifestation of his presence and the glory that belongs to him in his presence. Leviticus 1, if we read Leviticus 1, 1 to 11, it talks about um, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, two sons of Aaron, who decided to offer strange fire, the fire that they were not commanded to offer. And they offered it before the Lord. The Bible says, because they offered it before the Lord, the God that we serve, the holy God got angry. And what did he do? He lashed out onto them and consumed them. Praise the Lord. And they died. And when they died, if you read further, by the time you are getting to, um, um, to, okay, let's just read verse 7. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, should put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the, uh, upon the fire. Verse 8. And the priest, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. Verse 9, please. But his inwards and his leg shall. No, no, no. This is Leviticus 1. I'm talking about Leviticus 10. Sorry. Leviticus 10. 10 verses 1 to 11. Leviticus 10 verses. Okay, let me just continue. So they offered a strange fire. And when they offered a strange fire, yes, Nadab and Abihu, they, uh, the fire of the Lord consumed them and they died in his presence. And when they died in his presence, if you read further down, go to verse 4 for me, please. Go down to verse 4. Uh, and Moses called Michel and Elzaphar, the sons of Uzel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Verse 5. So they went near and carried them in their 
coats out of the camp, as Moses has said. Verse 6. And Moses said unto Aaron, watch now, and said unto Eliza and unto Ithima, his sons, uncover your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest you die. In other words, you must not mourn for your own brother. You must not mourn for your own son. He said, least you die. And least wrath came upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be veil the burning which the Lord has kindled. That is the awesomeness of the presence of God. Even Aaron himself cannot mourn for his own children because they offered strange fire. That is the responsibility that, be, that befalls a minister of God. He could not do that. And Moses warned him, never try that. Lest you die. Praise the Lord. If you check Ananias and Sapphira, you can check the issue of Ananias and Sapphira as well. Acts 5, 1 to Acts chapter 5, 1 to 5, where they came and lied before the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says at that moment, the, 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 the fire just consumed them and they died. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is one aspect of the presence of God that comes with his glory. The second part that also comes with glory, we can use Isaiah 6 verse 1. Isaiah 6 verse 1 to illustrate that. The second part of it is that in the year Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated, uh, sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and his trail filled the temple. That means that something can stand against the revelation of glory upon your life. He said, so King Uzziah was an obstacle. It was a barrier to the prophet that he couldn't see the glory of God. There could be no manifestation of the glory of God. Remember that the prophet is a servant of God. But King Uzziah was another individual who stood against the prophet seeing the manifestation of his glory. I pray this morning, whoever is King Uzziah in your life, be it in your attitude, be it in your, in your actions, be it in the way you do things, the Lord will unseat him this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so that was there. But one thing is clear, that the glory of God was available to King Uzziah, to, uh, um, the, to Isaiah. The glory of God was available to Isaiah, yet it was not accessible to him. It was available to Isaiah, yet it was not available because something was there. Praise the Lord. In our lives as children of God, the glory of God is available for us to assess. The question is, are we able to assess that glory? It is there. Our attitude our behavior, our nature may stand against us. The unwillingness to pay the price can stand against us from receiving the glory or assessing the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So the glory is available. But one thing is clear from what happened between the discussion that went on between Moses and God. In Exodus 33, 18, if you read from, uh, from I think about from 13 to 18, you see the discussion that went on between God and Moses. But it came to verse 18. God promised Moses, my presence will go with you. Moses said, no, take us from here, but your presence will go with us. If your presence uh, cannot go with us, then don't take us here. But the Lord said, my presence will go with you. But now Moses turned around and said, show me your glory. In other words, God can show you his presence without you beholding his glory. He can show you his presence and yet withhold his glory from you. And Moses said, yes, you have agreed to go with us. You have agreed to release your presence and to go with us. But I need to access your glory. In other words, as a child of God, you need to desire glory. You need to desire to access that glory of God. Glory is not a common spiritual commodity that anyone of us can easily get. Praise the Lord. Moses at his level 
God told him, I know you by name. And what this you, thing you have asked, I will do. But now Moses said, no, one thing is left. I need to see your glory. Show me your glory. And the Lord, what did he answer him? Did he show him his glory? Hello? Can we read it? If you go to that verse and read it, the Bible says, it says, all right, I will show you my goodness. Is that in your Bible? Hello? Is that in your Bible? What did he say? He said, I will make all my goodness to pass before you. In other words, in the glory of God is the manifestation of all the goodness of God. Hello? In his glory is the manifestation of all the goodness of God. And he said, I will show you all my goodness. Not one will be left out. And when you step into the glory of God, you swim in his goodness. I pray that somebody will find it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So what happens when the glory comes and fill the temple? He says, the glory of God came down and filled the temple. What happens when? Or when the glory of God appears elsewhere. Or when God manifests his presence elsewhere and the glory is there. When the glory of God fills the temple, it comes to a point where individuals are slayed in the spirit. And that is why when the glory appeared, the Bible said Moses could not continue to minister. The children of God cannot continue. The ministers of God can't. People are slayed in the spirit. Praise the Lord. And that gives us an awesome experience. It brings to our reality the power that accompanies his presence. Praise the Lord. And you know, it transforms you when you have that experience. You can never remain the same. It transforms you. Now, if you look at 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 16 to uh, 18. 2 Peter 1 to 16 to 18. Peter referred to the, what happened at the mountain of transfiguration. He referred to what happened at the mountain of transfiguration. In Matthew 17, verse 4, he referred back to it years after it has happened. Praise the Lord. Amen? He said, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. He's talking about his glory. Can we go to 18? For, he, for this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in his holy mountain. He referred back to his years after he had experienced the manifestation of his presence and his glory. I pray that God will give us that opportunity to step into his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same thing happened to uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah. In verse 5 of Isaiah verse, uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 5 of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 6, what did he say? He said something very significant. After he had said everything, he looked upon himself. He says, I, I'm a man of unclean lips. I, it, it transforms your body. And I dwell in the midst of what? Of people of what? That is what the glory of God does. It changes you and transforms your perception about whom he is. And from there, your life will never remain the same. I pray that God will help us and we will experience it in Jesus' name. Secondly, when the glory of God appears in the temple and fills the temple, one of the things that happen is that whatever is not glorious, whatever is not glorious will depart. And when the glory of God will appear in your life, whatever does not represent glory of God will depart. Praise the Lord. And that is why sickness and poverty cannot stand the glory of God when it comes into your life. 
So at times you look at the men of God and you look at servants of God and you look at children of God and you see them prospering and you begin to ask why. When God announces you, God wants to announce you, it draws you closer into his glory. And when you step into it, everything around you will begin to blossom. Praise the Lord. That is why you cannot find poverty or sickness around them. Praise the Lord. You know, we are looking, we are watching a program just this weekend. How many of us know Rinconeli? Was Yes, Rinconeli. You? How many of us? You? Very few of us, yes. But this was a young man who was ministering to God at those ages where we are growing. At his 80-something years, he's still dancing. He's still able to jump. And you ask, where is the grace coming from? Hello? And look at Daddy Joe. You look at his, his program. He's here today. Next week is there. The other week is there. You say he's finished. He's going back to the... He just left Cameroon. From leaving to Cameroon, he went into Holy Ghost service. Praise the Lord. And from Holy Ghost service, he's going to other programs. He finishing from there, he's back to South Africa at 80-something years. How many of us have been able to do that? We run around in one... Last two weeks, the program was so much that some of us were almost collapsing. Hello. Praise the Lord. But that is what the glory of God does. So that is one thing. So when the glory of God comes into you and feels you have been, remember you are the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. And he said the glory came down and filled the temple. I pray that you desire for the glory of God to come upon you in Jesus' name. When he fills the temple, everything that is not glorious must leave. Darkness must depart. So it is in, his pres in the presence of his glory that darkness is judged. And when darkness is judged, everything that is dark must be destroyed. Amen? So when we are crying, we are burdened by one thing or the other, let us carry it before him and ask him to take us, to expose us into his glory. Because once we step into it, that darkness must leave. Praise the Lord. And in this present time, we need the glory of God more than ever before. We pray that God will give us that glory in Jesus' name. I pray that we will begin to desire the glory of God to manifest in our prayer lives, in our, while we are studying the Bible, where we are communing with him, where we are there in the night before him, crying before him, that that glory will come. When that glory comes down, you know, one of the things that the glory comes, when it comes, fear disappears. Hopelessness is destroyed because you have the assurance that what you are looking for is released unto you. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But Isaiah continued. If you read from verse 2 to 4, it says, Above it stood the seraphims, each one with six wings. You know, what's, what I asked myself when I read here again was that with two wings, he covered his face. And with two wings, he covered his feet. And with two wings, he flew. And I asked myself, if your face is covered, how will you be able to see? Hello? But that is the wonder of God. That is the wonder of God. He doesn't need that eye to be able to see. Praise the Lord. He covered, the, the seraphims covered their own eyes, yet they're able to see. Where the glory of God appears, there is a revelation because darkness cannot stand. That revelation gives you insight into what is hidden. You cannot make a mistake when the glory appears. Hello. Because it takes you true into all things. That is why the Bible says when the Holy Ghost will come, he will teach us all truths. Hello. It takes you true. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, when the, that glory comes, when you look at it, he said, uh, uh, then one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, that is why we say 
anyone that is not clean, that is not righteous, dare not enter into his presence. These seraphims look upon one another and they look around them. They, all that they can see is the glorious holiness of God. And they cried upon themselves, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And they looked upon the earth and they can see the glory of God filled the entire earth. And you ask yourself, you know, I was reading this and when I asked myself, God, the glory of God fills the entire earth. Yet God comes to you and expose you to that same glory. How come it is important that, that it is possible? Sorry. This little us, the glory of God fills the earth and it comes down to your level and takes you and exposes his glory to you. It's just like when that was teaching, he said, God is so big, he covers the, but he comes down and brings himself and puts himself into your little heart and begins to operate in your little heart. That is the wonder of God that manifests in his glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have to be fast because of our time because we need to go into the other section of it. Praise the Lord. Now, if you move on, and he said, the door post, the post of the door moved at the voice of him who cried. They are crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the door post moved. And the house was filled with smoke. The, the, house, the smoke represents the cloud, the presence of God, the glory of God. And when that glory appears, one thing that you notice, if you have been in a congregation where the glory, or you are in a place where the glory of God appears, the minister of God is ministering, and the presence of God comes down heavily. What happens is that people will no longer remember at that moment, can I ask you, do you remember who has offended you? Hello. At that moment, for God not to destroy his people, discord is dispelled. Every disunity is destroyed. Problems are removed. And you find that the children of God will begin to worship in one accord. Has that happened to you? Hello. Everyone will begin to worship in one accord. of God. And I pray that in this congregation, the Lord will release it unto us in the name of Jesus. The Lord will release it unto us in the name of Jesus. So when we are talking about the glory of God, it is not something that we will trivialize about. I'm praying that before this month end, people will stand before this altar and testify of the glory of God. Of their experience concerning the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. I want us to stand up right now. The second message of this, we talk about the identity of his glory. But we have to end at this so that we can move into, into, into the anointing service. Just talk to God right now. Just talk to God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Just talk to God. Do you desire it? Moses desired it. At the level where he was able to discuss with God, yet he desired the glory. There is something that we don't know about that glory. And that is why Moses decided to say, God, show me your glory. I need to see your glory. At his level, he, he, he saw the presence of God, yet he, does not, he cannot understand what is in his glory. He said, God, release your glory to me. Expose me to your glory. Talk to God right now. While we are talking to God, if you have not given your life to Christ before we go into the anointing service, just raise your hand. Let me pray with us. If you have not given your life to Christ, you desire to know him. The first step is to know him. And then he will move you on to the level where you begin to experience him. You desire to know him, please raise your hand. You want to give your life to Christ, please raise your hand and we pray together. We pray together. While others are praying, just raise your hand and I will pray with you. You desire to know God, you have not given your life for the first time to him. Or you have given your life, and somewhere along the line, you have missed it. Somewhere along the line, you have missed it. Just raise your hand, and I will talk, and I will pray with you right now as we move on. We bless the name of the Lord. We are ready for the anointing then. I want us to talk to God and say, Father, 
and say, Father, O oh Lord, let my destiny be impacted by, by the glory of your presence in the name of Jesus. Cry to God. That is the first prayer point. I want us to cry to God. Let my destiny be impacted. The destiny of Moses was impacted by that glory. He said, show me your glory. His destiny was impacted by it. Number two, give us number two quickly. Father, please let me receive all that is in your goodness revealed in your glory. Shall we cry to God? Everything that it is that is a component of your glory. Oh, Father, please let me receive it. Let me receive it. Let me receive it. At the point of knowing the glory of God, experiencing it, nothing counts on this earth. Nothing counts on this earth. Nothing counts anymore. Nothing matters. That is why Peter, John, and James decided to ask our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, let us build a tabernacle here and remain here. We don't want to experience anything again. We just want to remain here. Nothing counts when you, are, you experience the glory of God, the glory of his presence. Let us talk to God. In Jesus' name we are praying. Finally, number three, and say, Father, please let your glory manifest in my life and in your church. Reposition your church and my life, my family. You can put whatever is there to the joy overflowing level in Jesus' name. You can put whatever you want to put in there. Ask God to reposition your life, to manifest his, his glory in our lives, to manifest his glory in the church and reposition us to the level of joy overflowing. Reposition us to that level of joy overflowing. When his goodness comes, in the fullness of his goodness, it is joy and joy all the way. Let him reposition us to that level of joy overflowing. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Daddy, we give you glory and honor. Thank you for your love and mercy. Daddy, thank you for your word that has gone forth. I pray that, Father, Holy Ghost, you walk in the, upon the word of God. And make us to desire to experience the glory of God. And let it change our life for better. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from that encounter with Moses, Moses never remained the same. He never remained the same. Father, I pray that Lord God Almighty, beginning from today, every one of us will never remain the same. That Lord, in your own special way, you will reach out unto us and expose us to your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' name.